Okay, Science 30, so we're about to start our next section, which is DNA and protein synthesis. Uh, we'll start talking about uh, the structure of DNA, uh, what a double helix is, components of DNA uh, in terms of a nucleotide, and we'll talk about what base pairing means. So inside of the nucleus of almost all the cells in our body, you've got chromosomes, and chromosomes are made up of DNA, which is your genetic information. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it's specific for every single individual. Uh, DNA is similar to a cookbook, basically, right? Like you've got, if you want to make a recipe, so if I want to make you, I have to have all of your pieces, all of your genetic information in the right order to make it you. If it was slightly different, it wouldn't be you. It'd be someone very similar to you, maybe a sibling, but it wouldn't be you. So the DNA is very specific to each person. Now, we know the structure of DNA. Um, thanks to three very important, and many others, but three vitally important uh, scientists and researchers to history. Uh, two gentlemen named Watson and Crick, but perhaps more importantly, uh, Rosalind Franklin. And so between the two of these, uh, the expert technology of Rosalind Franklin and the structural information from Watson and Crick, we've identified that there are four base pairs that make up the DNA or the genetic information of everything um, and it pairs off into uh, these four bases A, T, C, and G. Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And they just pair off um, in what we call a double helix. A DNA double helix. So Rosalind Franklin used, it, used x ray technology uh, and diffraction, uh, which is a method of uh, uh, light movement to study DNA. She discovered that DNA is a like a helical or a twisted staircase pattern and it repeated in intervals. And so her work uh, along with Watson and Crick allowed for the model of DNA that we understand it to be presented in 1953. And so what this looks like sort of the helix if I unwind it and lay it out flat is I've got my one backbone on one side and another backbone on the right hand side and then I've got these base pairs in the middle, A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G, and they're all in alternating orders. And that's where the magic lies. So DNA looks like a spiral staircase, which is a double helix. Here we flattened it out, and it contains a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base, either A, T, C, or G. And then those nitrogen bases are paired together with these hydrogen bonds. So it's hydrogen bonds that hold the adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanines together, the bases together. And then one phosphate, one deoxyribose sugar, one nitrogen base, and one hydrogen bond for, to another um, base is called a nucleotide. And the nucleotide is basically the simplest functional unit of DNA. So DNA has two complementary strands, which means it has two sides, and they are connected with these hydrogen bonds. It's got a backbone, or a, this dark shaded part, of sugars and phosphates, and it's got two nitrogen bases in the rungs. Adenine binds to thymine, guanine binds to cytosine. So there's my four different base pairs, A, T, C, and G. The bases are held together by hydrogen bonds. What do you get when you combine one sugar, one phosphate, and one nucleotide base? Well, you get a nucleotide. So here we've got 12 nucleotides. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then another six on this side. So DNA is like that twisted ladder, right? I can open it up in a diagram, I can show it in a diagram spiraled up, or I can take a, genetic, a computer rendering and have it spiraled that way. Okay, if one strand of DNA has the following nucleotide bases, what complementary base would the other strand have? So if I have these rows here, what would the opposite row be? So A always binds to T, uh, C to G, and vice versa. So it's always going to be the opposite. So I would have an A here, a, a, sorry, a T here, an A here, a G here, a C here, a T, a T, an A, a G, a C, and a T. Um, DNA has two functions. The first is to pass on information to your offspring, and the second is to produce proteins. So yes, you're going to pass on your information to your offspring when you have kids, but you will also produce proteins from that genetic information. So genes and DNA. Well, 
a gene is a small section of a chromosome, a small section of DNA that carries instructions for a specific protein. So genes are portions of DNA that make certain things, and that could be anything, anything that has a protein basis. So like the cells that code for your hair is coded for by a protein, by a gene, uh, um, skin cells, um, hormones in your body, uh, gland production, all of that stuff is going to be controlled by proteins, and proteins are coded for by portions of DNA we call genes. So when we need to make a specific protein, we go to a specific gene. So gene 1 might make lactase, an enzyme that breaks down milk. Gene 2 might make myosin, which is a protein in your muscles. Uh, gene 3 might make collagen, which is a protein found in your skin. Gene 4 might make hemoglobin, which is a protein in your blood, which we just discussed in a previous video. So there's different kinds of proteins. There's structural proteins, which give shape to cells and structures. There's enzymes, which speed up the rate of chemical reactions. There's defense proteins, like antibodies. There's hormones, chemical messengers, right, which maintain homeostasis, so hormones like insulin or testosterone or estrogen. Uh, there's transport proteins, like hemoglobin in your blood. Uh, and then there's energy. So proteins can act as energy, act as a source of chemical breakdown. So as you can see, proteins do a lot in your body, and genes are going to code for a specific set of any number of these. So proteins are uh, coded for by a gene. Each gene codes for one protein, and proteins are made up of these things called amino acids. And so amino acids link together in chains, and when that chain is done, you're going to code for a protein. And there's 20 different amino acids to choose from, like there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So out of only 20 amino acids, 20 essential amino acids, you can make just about any protein in your body. So different proteins are made up of different amino acids, just like different words are made up of different letters in the alphabet. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show how we can use amino acids and uh, the idea of protein synthesis to make an actual protein. Okay, see you in the next video.